This is Isaiah 13 and 13. Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place, and the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. And that shall be as the chaste robe, and as a sheep that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his own people, and flee every one into his own land. Yeah, see, when the economy starts getting worse, these other nations, they're going to look out for themselves. Okay, like you got a lot of these uh, Ishmaelites, these Arabs, they got these little liquor stores around here. You got Ishmaelites and Arabs that own these fucking uh, Taco Bell franchises, man. Well, when they see that this place is through, they're going to dip. A lot of them are already starting to dip. You know? With this whole COVID-19 shit, you know, a lot of businesses have to shut down. A lot of businesses can't allow people to come in. And they want that. They want to collapse the economy. But when they do that, these nations are going to run back to where they came from. And it says that you're going to be as a chased road that no man take it up. Nobody's going to look to assist you Edomites or help you Edomites. Nobody's going to look to bail you out when fucking all you, all you middle class and upper class Edomites start catching help. You know? Because really all they want, all, they, all these elite want is rich and poor. They ain't gonna want no fucking middle class. That's why the system is going to collapse. And all your pension, all your fucking 401k, your houses that you, you fucking financed, your cars, all that shit the government's gonna come to take. All that shit. And even cases where certain Jakes or certain uh, Edomites, certain heathens have paid off their debt, paid off their, fin their leases or whatever, their fi uh, financing. They're still going to take that shit. Because it says in, in the Apocrypha that they shall spoil your goods and your houses and, and take you out of your houses, man. You know? But when the deal goes down, you Edomites are going to get jacked and nobody's going to look to help you, man. They're going to remember all the wickedness you've done to them. You know? Hey, these, these other nations remember the wickedness you've done to these people. You had fucking, I, I believe it was Iran, send like millions of dollars on, uh, what was it, uh, Korea, send millions of dollars to help the tribe again. Because when they were asking for uh, COVID-19 tests, testing for the, for the coronavirus, you fucking Edomites sent them body bags, man. It said pretty much just fucking die out there. But you had these other nations, the heathen, sending Gad and, and uh, other, uh, like the Seminoles and Gad uh, resources, man, sending them money, you know? Showing you the difference between Esau and even the other nations. You know, because what did it say in Revelation 22? That there shall be the tree of life and it shall be for the healing of the nations, man. The other nations, they're gonna, they're gonna dwell in peace and safety after the thousand years of hardcore bondage. But it goes into saying that you need them, you're gonna be out. You're gonna be ousted. At the end of the thousand years, you're going to be bundled up and burned in a fire. It says there shall be none remaining of the house of Esau, man. You know why? Because of your track record, man, because of wickedness. It's all because of prophecy, okay? Because it does tell you in, in, uh, in the Romans, the children being born having not done wickedness or good, it was all part of the plan of Yahweh Bashim Shai. So you Edomites are two-time losers, man. Even though you run the world, you're a fucking loser. People are, 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 are afraid of you in the sense of not being able to trust you, not being able to welcome you. But here it is, Jake is at the bottom of the barrel. Jake is, Jake is undercover brother. And Jake is, is doing good. You know? Says everyone that is found shall be thrust through. Every every Edomite that is found, okay, shall be thrust through. In the day of our power, man. Like it tells you in uh, Psalm, Psalm 110. Let me get there real quick. This is Psalms 110 and verse 3. Actually, I'm gonna start at 1. This is Psalm 110 and 1. 
a psalm of David. Yahweh said unto my Lord, which is Yahweh Shai, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. So the Lord in due season is going to make all our enemies our footstool. He's going to bring them under us. He's going to make them tributaries unto the children of Israel. Yahweh shall send the rod of thy strength unto Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. In the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. So soon the Lord is going to bestow spiritual power upon his elect. Okay, and we're going to be like the dew of our youth. We're going to be like, like the ancient Israelites were. Like. When you read about Adam and the Adamites, they lived to be a thousand years. Okay. When you read about Joshua and Caleb, they were smiting down giants. They were killing giants. When they went to spy out the land, you had the Anakims there, the sons of Anak. Anak. And they said that they were giants, that we were like grasshoppers in, in their, uh, in, in comparison. You had all the Israelites that were terrified. Oh man, they're going to eat us. They're going to eat our children. And then you had Israelites that had that spirit. They were like, you know what? We're going to go in there. We're going to take them down. And the Lord is going to give that zeal, that courage, that strength back to these people. You know? What? It says, uh, everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Yep. Yeah, all you, all you Jakes. That want to fucking link up with these Edomites, you're going to get destroyed, man. When these nukes fall, they're going to hit your ass too because you want to snuggle up with these damn devils, man. Okay? You got you got niggas that are somewhat woke to the truth. But they still love Esau. Okay? They understand things. They understand the mark of the beast and... and you know, this racial tension going on. Oh, but it's not all white people. Though. It's not all white people. Though. There's some good white people. No, there ain't no good white people, man. There's Israelites that look like white people. Okay? There's Israelites that look like white people. That's the truth. But there ain't no good fucking Edomites, man. Alright? They're they're wicked. They're, 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 their spirit is estranged. They're created to be evil, wicked. It says, their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes, their houses shall be spoiled, and their wives ravished. Yeah, because the things you've done to, to these people, man. You know, when you were uh, taking the Native Americans, taking, killing the man, uh, you have that great uh, Thanksgiving feast, which people are going to celebrate real fucking soon in a couple months. You know, during those times, they actually planned a raid against Ged, the Calvary, the U.S. Calvary. And when they raided Ged, first they uh, took all the chiefs. They had a great Thanksgiving feast with them. They poisoned the, the, the chiefs of Ged. And when they were poisoning them and they were dying off, they were running to the villages, snatching up the, the Gedite women, fucking having their way with them, selling them off, and taking the children and sending them off to boarding schools, man. You know? So you were doing that to the children of Israel, so there in return, this is going to happen to you. You know, when martial law happens, yeah, there's going to be uh, Israelites and other nations that, that are going to be doing these things to, to, to you and your women. But then ultimately in the kingdom, okay, in the kingdom, you Edomites are going to get put to death by mass numbers. And when you get put to death, your wife is going to become another man's wife. As the scriptures say, you know, women, women are, are spoils of war, man. You know, if a woman and her husband dies, she she is no longer, her spirit is no longer uh, 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 joined with that man because his spirit went up. Therefore, she's free game. If a woman, if a woman's husband dies, you, you can have that woman, okay? You can, you can go and deal with that woman. It says, Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them. Which the Medes are the Russians. Which shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Yeah. Their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces, 
and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb, their eyes shall not spare children. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency, shall be as when Yahweh by Shem Yahweh overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation, neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there, but wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures, and owls shall dwell there, and satyrs shall dance there, and the wild beasts of the island shall cry in their desolate houses, and dragons in their pleasant places, and her time is near to come, and her days shall not be prolonged. Yep. The nuclear destruction is coming to Babylon. It's coming to Babylon and you Edomites. And it's going to happen between a, a family feud. Because Russians are Edomites too. Okay, you guys are going to feud over, over, over uh, supremacy. And you guys are going to start shooting nukes on each other. But Russia got the stronger nukes. Russia's got a stronger military. You know, even America's allies are going to turn against America. That's why I prophecy. You know, get out Malachi for one. Malachi 4 1 it says for behold the day cometh that shall burn as an oven yeah that's what's gonna cause it is a nuclear fire man okay the day cometh it says that Esau's days or Babylon's days shall not be prolonged so this day is coming that's why you got in the Middle East tension between Israel and Iran It says, they shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yeah, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. Yeah, all that are proud, which Esau, the so-called white man, is the most proud. You Edomites are the most proud. And then, you teach these people to be proud and these other nations, and you promote wickedness. You promote pedophilia, you promote witchcraft, you promote rape, robbery, and murder. Okay, uh, what, what's the main, uh, the main, the three main uh, things that Jake talks about is sex, money, and murder. And where do they develop those thoughts from Esau? You know? And, yeah, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, yep. that I shall leave them neither root nor branch. Yeah, meaning no, no. No root nor branch. I mean, you're not going to have a a, a, a a masculine figure to extend uh, your rulership. You know, because the, the heads of Esau, they're going to be in chains. As it tells me about Sodom and Gomorrah, that your rulers, your nobles, shall be in chains. Man. Psalm 149 and 5. Uh, Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. The saints are Israelites. Let the high praises of the Most High be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints, praise ye the Lord. Yeah. The scriptures say, he that leadeth them to captivity shall go into captivity. So your nobles, you're going to be bound with chains. You're going to be bound with fetters of iron like you did to these people during the transatlantic slave trade, during the, 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 the uh, dark ages, or after the dark ages, I should say, during medieval times. Okay, when you're putting these people into slavery, man. Because slavery didn't start here in America, man. Okay, slavery started in, in Europe. Because the southern kingdom was in rulership in Europe where Esau broke out. Where the Renaissance era started. And Renaissance means rebirth. It was the rebirth of the old Roman Empire, the old Roman system. You know? And, and you Edomites broke out. 
you were uh, resurrected there in power, and you started to put the Moors, which are Israelites, in the captivity. You started slaughtering the Moors. That's true. Yeah. Malachi 1 and 4, whereas Edom says, We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. Yep, yeah, yeah that, that was your thought. You came out of your your captivity. Because little do you know, Edomites were in slavery during those times. Well they not good. No, they do know. There's a lot of there's a lot of arguments that Esau puts up. And one of them is that, oh, we were in, we were in slavery to you first. Yeah, but I'm speaking about like Esau in general. Like these low little folks, low level Edomites, they don't know that. Some no, some of them really do. I've seen our I've seen arguments with it on YouTube comment boards. The like, knowledge is being increased on both sides. And that that's one that is one of the arguments that's being put out there is that the Moors had white people in slavery. You know, that's a true that was a true event. You know. But that's actually, prophecy. Yeah. Yeah, actually had them in slavery now. It says, uh, they shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. Yep. So forever the Lord the Lord hates you, man. Hates you so called white people, man. You know, you're the border of wickedness wherever you go. Wickedness flourishes, man. You know, wickedness is introduced. You know? So yeah. Go ahead. Come on. Um, give me a Revelation 13 and 10. And then let's go to Mal. And then after that, we'll go to Malachi 1. It's Revelation 13 and 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killed with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Yep. So he that leadeth into captivity shall also go into captivity. Now, the thing you, you got to understand is what, who was ruling before the Moors? Before the Moors were ruling, you had the Greeks and then you had the Romans that came into power. Now, the Romans were also, uh, uh, had the, uh, Israelites, so-called Jews, or not so-called Jews, but uh, the Jews at that time, the tribe of Judah, Benjamin and Levi, some of the northern kingdom that were still there, were tributaries. Uh, Baruch 4, what is it, Baruch 3 and 8? That's why when uh, uh, Pontius Pilate was talking about Yahweh Shai and said, behold your king, the Israel, what, what did Jake say? He said, we have no king but Caesar. And the reason why is because uh, Israel at that time was one of the provinces of, uh, of the Roman Empire. And Jake was being persecuted underneath the Roman Empire. In fact, the Herodian dynasty were Herod, the Herods were actually Edomites, uh, what you would call crypto Jews today. It was a crypto Jew that was put into power uh, as the governor of, of Israel. All right. Go ahead. It's Baruch 3 and 8. It says, Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, where thou hast scattered us, for a reproach and a curse, and to be subject to payments, according to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Lord our power. Yep, so according to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Lord. And so going back to the curses, Give me a, a Deuteronomy 28. Let's go into the curse. And just start. Yeah, start at 15. This is Deuteronomy 28 and 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of Yahweh thy power, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Yep. So it. He's, it, it, that was the covenant, right? So what the Most High told Abraham was walk before me and be thou perfect. You know, basically do do my will. 
okay? And that was what Israel was set up to do. Israel is set up to do the will of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. That's the name of the Most High, is Yahweh. That's his true name, all right? It's not Jehovah, it's not Ye, uh, uh, Yahweh, all right? It's Yahweh, his son's name is Yahweh Shai, all right? He delivers or he saves. He saves us from what? Our sins, our iniquities, our past sins, our past iniquities, dating all the way back to the sin, the, the sin of Adam, okay? Now, since we, in the scriptures it tells you to put off the old man, that's basically what you're doing when you come into the truth, is you are denying your will, what you want to do, in order to do the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Which that was what Jake was meant to do from the beginning. Jake was meant to do the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai from the beginning. Real quick. Uh, go to Ecclesiastes 12 and I think like 18 or something like that. It's at the bottom. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. It says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yahweh by Shem Shai and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. This is the whole duty of Israel. It's the fear of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai and keep his commandments. Okay, so that's the conclusion of, of the whole matter. That's why it talks about the simplicity that is in Yahweh Shai. Okay, it's really simple. Like, uh, the camera cut off when this guy came up last week and we were talking to him. And uh, he started talking about how the law is the schoolmaster. And, you know, we got into certain things pertaining to the laws. Which, we're, we're really not here to dispute the law. We're really not here to go tit for tat. We're not here to uh, uh, talk about all oh, the law, statutes, the commandments, this, that, and the third. Because at the end of the day, we're all sinners, man. We've, we've all gone astray. We all went off. You could, you, could, you could go all day going tit for tat about the law, man. All right, anybody can pick you apart, or I can pick you apart, he can pick him apart when it comes to the law. We're, we're wearing mixed fabrics right now. So what, it, what this is really about is putting off iniquity, all right, getting away from wickedness and your own will, your, your, what you want to do with your life, what you want, what the, your dreams and aspirations or whatever, in order to do the law as perfectly as you can, all right, and believe that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is going to take care of the rest because the Lord's got to save you from the sins that you've already and still do commit. And so what really what's really going on is is we're deconstructing all the lies that you've been told for hundreds of years already, man. America's not a nation. All right, that doesn't uh, America as a nation doesn't exist. It's not real. That's a lie that you've been told to, man. All right, this is nothing more than a corporation that got put together in order to put you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans in slavery and to profit off of you. That's what it was created for. All right, and also to push the agenda of democracy, the beast system, upon the rest of the world as well. And to push that image of the so-called white man as God upon the earth. That's what America was created for, man. All right. So the conclusion of the whole matter is what? Fear Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and do his will because that's your duty. Alright? So we're not, we don't go tit for tat when it comes to the law, but you do, uh, uh, as a show of faith, keep the laws to the best of your ability. Okay? And you do, you don't do your pleasures. Okay? You don't want to indulge in the wickedness and the different things that people do in this world, man. So you, you, you separate yourself from that. That's, see, going into the ways of the heathen, going into all this different wickedness that's out here is the reason why we got jacked up in the first place. The reason why curses got put, could have got put upon us in the first place. Why we got scattered among all the nations. Why you have Israelite foreigners, man. All right, being an Israelite for, foreigner is a reproach, man. Even even people of your own nation will look at you and, 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 and tell you to fuck off because of it, man. All right, go uh, go back to the curses. Yeah, this is Deuteronomy 28 and 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of Yahweh thy power, 
to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And overtake thee. That, that means no matter what you do, no matter where you go, these curses are going to find you. I don't care if you're rich, all right? If you're rich, you're, you're super cursed, man. If you're a Kanye West or a Jay-Z, right? if you're up in this society, you're in Esau, you're straight up in Esau's pocket, man. You're his fucking sock puppy. You gotta do whatever the hell he tells you to do, man. All right, if you're in the uh, media, you're in the entertainment industry, all right? You're nothing more than a sock puppy. You gotta do whatever this damn devil tells you to do. They talk about Jake's that are, uh, uh, they have basically, they don't sign with record labels or whatever because they want what's called creative control. See, but if you want to become super rich and super famous in this society, you got to give up that thing which is called creative control. And you got to put out there whatever Esau wants you to put out there. You don't, you ain't got no say in the music that you write or the, or the different uh, scenes that you play in movies or whatever. All right, you got to get up there and do all types of abominations and weird shit. Just like that Beyonce, what was it, Jay-Z and Beyonce concert they had a long time ago and it had the, it had a, a like a, a, a upside down cross in the back and everybody was throwing up all them symbols and shit. Why do you think that is, man? All right, because them curses are upon you. All right, you rich ass jakes, them curses are upon you. Uh, uh, if you're upper middle class you're, and you're an Israelite, all right, what happened in 2008 when the stock market crashed? A lot of you guys, including my own family, lost their houses. They lost their houses, man. Why? Because those curses will pursue you and overtake you, man. And, then, and America is heading for disaster. All right, America is heading for disaster, bro. And everybody's gonna be touched. All right, including you Edomites. You Edomites that are living in these different high rises and these different gated communities and these different mansions. You got beach houses. All that shit's about to be taken away, man. All right, because when this dollar collapses, all right, you're, everybody's gonna be on the same level. The only one that's gonna be able to, uh, uh, to have anything in this society at that time are gonna be different government officials and people and, and the super rich people that own fucking corporations and shit, man, and their families. Everyone else, you're gonna be out here in the middle of uh, uh, Squalorville. Because these curses are coming off of certain jakes, all right? Jakes that are, are, are repenting to you, how about Shemiah Shai? These curses are coming off of them. These curses are being put upon all the heathen now. All right, now these different governments around the world are catching uh, uh, some pandemic coronavirus. Your economies are, 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 are collapsing. America's economy is getting ready to collapse. What's that? What's going to happen to the rest of the world's economies when America's economy collapses? All right, the whole world is going to get plunged into darkness, man. All right, because what does it say in the scriptures? That the Lord, His indignation is upon all the nations and their armies, man. But more uh, uh, on the curse of God. It says, Curse shall thou be in the city, and curse shall thou be in the field. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land. The increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. Yahweh by Shai shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke, and all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do, until so thou be destroyed, and until thou perish quickly, because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. And see, and these curses are getting ready to come upon the entire uh, uh, land of America. All right, so you Edomites are going to get hit by it too. You, you rich Edomites, guess what? Your houses are going to be spoiled, man. All right, your children are going to be dashed to pieces, and your wives ravished, man, like we read in uh, uh, Isaiah the 13th chapter. All right. Because there's going to become a point in time when, what does it say in 2nd Ezra, that people are going to be invading one another for lack of bread. And in the poor places, when there's no more fucking bread, who do you think they're going to go to? They ain't going to stick around in the slums. They're going to, they're going to take it to, 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 to these rich neighborhoods where these fucking uh, Edomites have everything prepared for them, man. 
that's going to happen. That's why it talks about the time is coming when the keepers of the house shall tremble. Alright? Because you guys that are, you Edomites and, 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 and these other nations, they're going to leave. They're not going to stick around. Alright? And if you're, if you're a, a, of a European uh, country, guess what? You're, the same thing, the same shit's going to happen in, in your country over there in Europe too. It's already happening. It's already happening, man. That's why you have all these different so-called immigrants that are flooding into the UK and Germany and all, and all these different places and taking it over. Right? And now everybody's saying if you're white, you're automatically a racist. Why? Because of colonialism, because of imperialism, because of all the wickedness that Esau has done throughout the entire world, man. It's put a shame and a blot on you. Now everybody's waking up to who you really are, man. Now they're taking over your fucking society, man. And you can't say shit about it. That's why you have all these different Edomites on camera bowing down, talking about how they, they uh, 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 repent from being white or whatever the hell they have doing. Uh, uh, apologizing for their white privilege and shit. Why do you think that's happening? That's because the curses are coming upon you. And the plowman is overtaking the reaper. See, e e Esau thought he was going to dance off into the night, man. He thought he was going to keep predictive programming and slowly bring in his new world order. But the word of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh has gone out. And now all these nations are looking at you like, damn, this guy is the fucking devil, man. Now your fucking economy's collapsing. All these different nations are coming against you to destroy you. That's what's happening, man. That's what's happening to you right now. Give me a, a Job. Was it Job 4? The fourth chapter? Starting at 9. See, now it's coming to the point where if a so-called white person dies, nobody gives a shit anymore. Nobody cares. Why do you think that's happening? All right, because that shame is covering you now. You're being revealed for who you are, which is the devil. Now everybody's calling you the devil, man. Go ahead. This is Job chapter 4 and 9. It says, by the blast of Yahweh they perish, and by the breath of his nostrils are they consumed. Maybe the Job 20 and 4. The joy of the hypocrite is but for a moment. This is Job 20 and 4. Knowest thou not this of old, since man was placed upon earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment? Yeah, no, no it's, you know this from old, right? As it tells you in the scriptures, it says to look, look to the old generations and see what, what went down. All right, and one thing that you notice is that every nation that came upon the earth that did wickedness got got destroyed. Sodom and Gomorrah. Why did Sodom and Gomorrah get destroyed? Why did the nation of Israel get jacked up, man? Why did Babylon, the Greeks, the Medo-Persian Empire, the Romans? Why did they go down? Why is this uh, 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 system in society going down? Because of wickedness. Because of unrighteous dealings, man. That's why. All right. And the, 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 the righteous people that are supposed to be ruling this earth are the Israelites, all right? But it's according to election. See, the Lord has it set up to where uh, only a remnant of Israel is going to be saved and going to rule. The rest are actually going to be destroyed, man. Why? Because they're continuing in wickedness. They're continuing uh, uh, to be evil. They're not looking to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man. You literally got people that call themselves Israelites that say they disdain anybody that uses the name Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. They literally say they can't stand it when they hear the name Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. That that, that oh, when they hear the when they hear the, those names, they know wickedness is around. You think a guy like that is going to make it into the kingdom of heaven? He's going to make it on a chariot? Do you think the Lord died for an asshole like that? You look at his old videos, what is he doing talking about calling on the names? You how about some y'all shine sincerity and truth? Back then, back then you, you were actually right, man. You were real. Hey, but like that video, you must have forgotten. 
and then you, you got Israelites to call, still call themselves black. You got the ISUPK. Remember when we was out there in San Jose, you had this idiot that was wearing a shirt that said angry black man on it. So if you know the truth and you know an Israelite, why are you still, why are you still identifying as black? That's because the FBI got your ass set up to do that so that they can label you a terrorist, a black identity extremist. Alright, we denounce that. They know they know black people in our congregations, man. There's no black people in the truth. There's only Israelites. There's only tribe of Judah, Issachar, Levi, Simeon, so on and so forth, Manasseh, Reuben, Benjamin, Naphtali. That's who's in the truth, man. Not no damn blacks or Hispanics. I don't even like using those terms because it just it's just confusion, man. It's just confusion. White and black is nothing but confusion, man. There's no fucking such thing as a white or black person, man. There's only there's there's Israelites, there's these heathen nations, and then there's Edomites, man. And they're not white, they're not clean, they're unclean. Go ahead. Those excellency mount up to the heavens and his hand reach unto the clouds, yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. Yep. They which have seen him shall say, Where is he? He shall fly away as a dream, and shall not be found. Yet he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. Why does it say that? Nobody's going to see you. You're going to be like a bad dream when you, when you wake up and you say, well, I've had those dreams before while I'll wake up, and then I'll be like, oh shit, man. I'm glad that that was a dream. Damn. That's how it's gonna be in the kingdom. Somebody, you might have somebody, you might have a heathen or something dreaming about Esau and wake up and be like, oh shit. Oh yeah, that's, that's over with. That time is done. Why? Because after a thousand years of slavery, you're gonna be erased. Nobody's gonna have to see you anymore, man. Nobody's gonna have to deal with your shit no more. With your fucking lies, your bullshit. That's what you transgresses by wine, man. Why you you out here pushing all this wickedness upon the entire world, man? You started with the Greeks, then it passed on to the Romans, and then what? You had the seven heads. You had the seven heads. You had these different kingdoms that came up: the French, the Spanish, the British. What did the British do? The British went around and colonized the world. And then what happened? And then America, and then they, the, the British went, they called it not, that's why America's beginnings was what? When you look at an American flag, why does it look so similar to a British flag? With the red, white, and the blue. Same thing, man. It goes back to the East India Trading Company, man. All right, because this country, at first was colonized by Britain. And then what happened? You had the Revolutionary War. And then they, they proclaim, the, that's why you had the 4th of July or whatever, America's independence. That was basically Esau breaking away from a, a so-called Great Britain. And now you have Trump that talks about, they, they was talking about what? Make America great again. That's why you have in the scriptures, Mystery Babylon the Great. Because America is Babylon. This place was set up to push democracy and, and, and uh, uh, Luciferianism across the fucking world, man. And during the, during the uh, uh, what was it, the 40s, I think it was the 40s, you had something called the Industrial Revolution. And it, ha it, started, in, it started in Britain, all right? And what happened was, is America took that and exceeded its wickedness, man. And all these other nations became revolutionized with industry, which is where you get all these different factories that are just pumping out goods to be bought and sold and traded here in America. That's why the earth is being destroyed. That's why these nations have gone mad, because of that wine, that wine of Babylon. Live excessively. Give me a, uh, uh, give me a, uh, was it Wisdom of Solomon, the second chapter, I think? I think you start at the top. 
because that's what America promotes surfeiting, all right, excessiveness, living beyond your means. In the scriptures, it talks about uh, uh, having what you need, man. All right, but Esau is all about what? Excessiveness. Hoarding, basically, man. That's what Esau is. He's a hoarder. He hoards every fucking thing for himself. He don't want to share it with nobody, man. That's what the New World Order is about. Him having co full control over the earth. And all you people that are on the earth as his slaves. Go ahead. Yeah, this is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 1. For the ungodly said, reasoning with themselves, but not a right. Yeah, the ungodly. Esau, Edom. All right. You were reasoning among yourselves, but not a right. Go ahead. Our life is short and tedious, and the death of a man there is no remedy. Neither was there any man known to have returned from the grave. For we are born at all adventure, and we shall be hereafter as though we had never been. For the breath in our nostrils is as smoke, and a little spark in the moving of our heart. Which being extinguished, our body shall be turned into ashes, and our spirit shall vanish as the soft air. See, and that's why it's not a right. Your spirit does not vanish in the, in, in the soft air, man. Okay, your spirit is actually energy. Alright? And not only that, there is resurrection from the dead. Prophets have resurrected people from the dead, man. Yahweh Shai resurrected from people from the dead. Yahweh Shai was resurrected from the dead. So the Lord can take your spirit out and put your spirit back in. Alright, the Lord, uh, uh, what's he call it? Uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, reincarnates people. Which is why all these different kingdoms are on the earth today. Which is why you have uh, uh, different. The, like, uh, like different time periods have different spirits well we're living in the time period of, of, of when Rome fell alright that's why you have brothers that talk about Trump being Nero the spirit of 70 AD is back alright different Caesars are, are, are back different uh, uh, old Roman politicians are back because like uh, uh, Ecclesiastes one and nine. It's Ecclesiastes one and nine. The thing that has been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. And there is no new thing. Uh, get that scripture. The uh, prophets are subject to the prophets. There is no new thing that's uh, under the sun, man. That which has been is that which shall be done. Okay? Different things that was going on uh, uh, in different time periods repeat itself. It happens over and over again. This is 1 Corinthians 14 and 32. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. The spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. So if you were prophesying, uh, uh, because it said the, the prophets are uh, uh, have been around since the beginning, since the world began. It said the prophets have been around. So if you're a prophet, that means that you've been prophesying since the world began. Go ahead. This is Jeremiah 1 and 4. Then the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So before you were born, he said, Before I formed thee in the belly. So that means before, before the, 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 the egg was even fertilized. Before you started becoming a little jelly bean, you were already ordained and sanctified to be a prophet. You were already set up to do this. All right. If you're Grandmaster Jake, before your punk ass was formed in the in the belly, what happened? The Lord sanctified you to be a demon. 
And you how about Shamir outside is gonna kill gonna kill you and everybody that follows you, man. What is that? Oh. I like this scripture. What? I get Isaiah 28. Start at 9. So Isaiah 28 and 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For yeah, so... Whom, he, whom he's going to teach a uh, uh, doctrine are them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. So you got to have the basic understanding uh, 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 of life, basically. Man. Who you are, well, who, who, what's going on, why, you know, why the world is the way it is. And then the Lord's going to teach you doctrine, man, so that you're going to become mighty in these things. So that you're going to be able to dispute these things. So that you're going to be able to come out on the highways and the hedges and proclaim these things. To rightly divide the words of truth. That's when you're weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. You're, you're able to rightly divide the word of truth. And you, you, are, you yourself are living according to the ways of truth. See, as it tells you in the scriptures, let everyone that nameth the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. See, when you do that, you naturally uh, uh, are going to be, uh, 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 you're naturally going to be, what's the word for it, able to bring out these scriptures because you're living them. When you live, eat, sleep, and breathe something, it becomes natural to you. And that's what you want. You want the truth to be natural to you, man. And so how do you do that? You live according to these, to these scriptures and you will... You will be the embodiment of that light, man. You will carry it within you. So that anybody that has a question, or, or you might be talking to somebody, everyday regular Joe might bring up a subject, and you have the wisdom and subtility to be able to dance or stand circles around this guy, man. Not saying wickedly, but you're able to go in, in and out of things. So that you don't give them what you don't need to give them. You give them what you do need to give them. Or maybe you don't give them anything at all. Maybe you just tell them about the economy, different things like that. But you being endowed with truth, you know things to a certain extent, extent to where you can give light. Uh, uh, you can shed a portion of light to anybody that you talk to. Whether they receive it or not. Whether they see it or not. Alright? Because the light shineth in darkness, man. This, this whole world is engulfed in darkness. So you're a light that shines in darkness. Not everybody can see that light, man. As it tells you in the scriptures, the majority of people, the majority of Israel has been blinded. Go ahead. It says, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. And that's how the word is taught, all right? Because there's... Uh, 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 the, the, the precepts and the scriptures, you might go to one book, one chapter, one verse that'll say this. Uh, uh, you know, it'll talk about, you, you go to the book of Genesis, it talks about Esau. Then you go to the book of Revelation. See, you go to Genesis, it talks about Esau and his blessing, how he was blessed with the sword. Then you go to Revelation, it talks about the red horse that was given a great sword. Yeah, you, 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 talk, you can talk about uh, uh, slavery, you can go... To Habakkuk, where it talks about uh, uh, being sold unto the Grecians, and then you can go to Revelation 13 that says, "Anybody that was uh, uh, those that led into captivity shall go into captivity." So on and so forth, man. So precept is upon precept. You can talk about uh, uh, how the curses are were put upon Jake, and then you relate it to the transatlantic slave trade. So precept is upon precept. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. 